All right, we've got a couple of barbs here. I'm just going to make one more and give it a bit of more rotation in the other direction so we have a few random barbs like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is create the twisted look for a barbed wire. One way to do that, and some people get a little confused with how to do this. I'm going to create a rectangle, flip copy it over like that. The reason is I want to get the nodes there in the position that they're already in. So I'm going to select those, weld them together, fill with black, right click to get rid of the outline. So we have a single curve there that I'm going, now going to apply some distortion to. So grabbing the interactive distortion tool, put it into zipper mode, and perhaps something like that will do. You could choose the smooth distortion button if you wanted. And that should smooth it out a little bit like that. And then you can convert that to curves by pressing Control Q. And that gets rid of the overhead for it being in a distorted mode. So let's flip copy this in place using Shift and Control like that. So now we've got something that looks like this. But if we were to, let's say, uh, make it look like that and then we'd copy that along, it'll always look like one of the pieces of the wire is on top of the other and th that they're not twisting. But we want it to look like it's twisting. So to do that, I'm going to uh, copy that outline over to the other piece. So they're both two-point white outlines. Actually, I'm going to give it a color here so you can see how I'm going to do this. It's kind of an important skill to have. All right, so now to, to get it to twist and look proper, we need to make, create a rectangle. I'm just going to put on my snapping here for a moment. And we need to separate these colored pieces from the interior ones. So I'm going to press Control shift q on that one, and then Control shift q on this one. Grab this rectangle, Shift-Select the red piece, and trim. And now I'm going to flip, rec flip this rectangle over to the right and trim into the yellow like this. Okay, get rid of that rectangle. And this is where now we'll, we'll trim using the red into this black piece like, like uh, that. Get rid of that. Go over here. Choose the yellow one. And then trim into this piece like, like that. Get rid of the yellow piece because it was just a just there for you know our purposes. So now you can see here how it looks like it's they're rotating around each other as it goes along, and that's really important. Okay. Um, so the next step here is we need to kind of isolate a segment of this. And we can see here that there's a node at that point. It's going to go to this section there. Scale this up. If I was to weld these sections together, I've assigned W to weld stuff in my workspace, by the way. I'm going to grab that rectangle and trim in, or uh, intersect into this, rather. It just creates a new piece that looks like that. So if I was to grab this and move it along to this point, just hit Control R, you can see how it looks like they're rotating around each other as it goes along. Okay, So that's kind of what I was looking for there. So I'll get rid of that. Snapping is still on and I don't want it to be on, so scale it down and make sure my snapping is on. Weld that to that piece, put it into position, see how it's looking. I'll say that's pretty good. Move that down. So this is all welded into one single curve for the moment. Grab the edge of that, move it over there. This barb will fit right into position. Move this one over here. There, how's that looking? Not too bad. So we can see that at the start of this barb, um, in a moment, just grab a rectangle tool, go to this point, trim into that, move this over here, zoom over there. So we're going to weld all the background wire sections together like that. Grab all of the barbs, weld them all together. I'm going to give an outline on them, like this for the moment, just to see what I'm dealing with here. Make the outline look, you know, similar kind of thickness. I'm going to con convert all of those to an object, so that allows me to trim into the other background wire. 
So now we've got something that looks like this. Zoom in here, see what's going on. I'm going to use the barbs to trim into this now, like that. I'm going to just reduce some nodes here just to thin things out a little bit. Looks like we have a kind of a little glitch in this area here. What's going on with that? I'm just going to do a little node cleanup on this one. And what do we have now? Right inside here, there's some a few little glitches. I'm going to select those nodes and just simply delete them. Sometimes you'll have to do this kind of stuff. It's just the way it goes. There we go. I think we're just about done. Taking some extra time right now is a good idea to prevent uh, some headaches later on. So let's see, we're, see if we're happy with that. I'm going to save our work. Okay, so now we've got a good chunk of barbed wire. We've got the barbs, and then we've got the wire below. I'll weld all of that together. Hit Control A, convert it to curves and then cusp nodes, so that it'll help um, go around curves nicely. Just going to reduce nodes one more time. All right, so now we've got a barbed wire section. We'll press the I key, and we're going to save that as, I'm going to call it barbed one overwriting an existing one there. So if I, again, if I drag it across a section, you can see how it's not dividing up as well as I would like. But, so let's create a, go ahead and create a barbed wire border here for this uh, document. I'm going to create a contour, break that apart. Control K is what I pressed there, by the way, to break it apart easily. I'm going to uh, curve this out, something like that. Give it a bit of an outline so we can see what we're doing here. Now, if I was to press the I key, go ahead and choose that barbed wire, you can see how it's stretching that one segment, you know, that thing that we just made across the whole border. So where CAD tool is useful, but by the way, this is still a live rectangle. We have to convert that to curves for this operation. I just pressed Control Q there. If we go to the divide curve thing, let's go to, let's say, I don't know, seven. Let's see what happens here. It's just doing some number crunching. And now it looks a lot more realistic by breaking that outer border into multiple segments where this is applied across those seven different segments that we had. So it looks pretty plausible. We don't need this anymore. But uh, let's say I wanted to create, uh, again, my my initials using, I'm just going to use the, the uh, well, I could use even this tool here. I'm just going to create a J. And... Something like that. Zoom in here. So that the H doesn't look too bad for what I'm doing here. But this one doesn't look very good. So I'm going to divide this, I believe, into two should help make that look a little better. So if we go to the, uh, again, CAD tool there, divide that curve into maybe a couple of sections. Well, we may even need more yet. Just going to hit Control Z. Let's go to maybe four. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks better. All right. Now that we have all of that, I'm going to hit Control A, hold down Shift, double click the rectangle tool. That creates that bounding box we've talked about before. In order to send this off into uh, using raster control into Photoshop, hit Control A. Convert this to a bitmap. 400 will give us lots of uh, decent resolution there for something like this. We could apply a layer style to that. You know, it depends how rusty of a look you want to get for your barbed wire there. Let's say we're happy with that. I'm just going to flatten that layer style. Save that back to Corel Draw. Now it's all updated there. These kind of things look good with a some kind of a background on it. Let's just zoom in on it, see what we got. There you go. So, got the twisty look on it if we zoom in on that. Everything turned out pretty well. 
if we wanted to see a, you know how it might look in a different way you just hit control z a few times to get back there send it off into photoshop again try a different layer style that's pretty wacky what do we have on this one this one has more of a darker rusty look that's not too bad uh, we can flatten that one send it back into draw now that's updated put a background behind all of this more of the rusty look so anyway hope you enjoyed that's uh some fun stuff you can do with uh, corel draw and um, sending it into photoshop for layer styles